I should not be in engineering. What is up people of the internet? My name is Avery and I'm in my fourth year of electrical engineering in UBC, currently on a 12 month internship. Now, in the three years that I've been in engineering so far, I can confidently say that engineering is pretty fucking hard. And also, in my time so far being in engineering, I've also come to realize that I am what some people call mentally challenged. Combine the two and you have a recipe for my fair share of failed exams and a lot of numbers below the 50% mark. So if you're a fellow engineering student and are questioning all of your life choices up until this point, I'm gonna go through every single exam that I've failed so far in my electrical engineering degree and hopefully you'll see that you're probably doing a lot better than I am. Now, to ensure that this video does not become five hours long, I'm only going to talk about the midterms and the final exams that I've failed. If I included quizzes in this, we would actually be here forever. Also, a failed exam means a score below 50% after scaling. Again, if I chose to cover the exams that I failed before scaling, we would also be here forever. Also, since I've pretty much reached UNC status as an engineering student now, there are bound to be some exams that I've forgotten that I've failed, like forgotten the score, and also possible exams that I may fail when I return back from my co-op work terms which is definitely a very high possibility. But without further ado, here is every single exam that I've ever failed as an engineering student so far. Ah yes, first year. The year where what do I want to get into turns into what can I get into? And it was certainly a very humbling year for me as well because it was the first year that I've ever failed an exam. And three of them for that matter. So the first exam that I ever failed in my university career just so happened to be the exam that I was closest to passing, which was my chemistry for engineers midterm exam with a solid 49%. In fact, I was 0.25 points away from passing that exam. Also, the class average was not much better than my performance and the class average was actually like a 52%, which is pretty low, I will say that. I remember that when I was taking this exam, I felt like it was way harder than it needed to be. And also it was like way different from what the practice was. And the practice did nothing to prepare me for this exam. And also, I just don't know how to study for chemistry. Like chemistry is not like a math or a physics course where you just grind practice problems. And it's not as theoretical as some other courses that I've taken before, where you just straight memorization. It's like kind of in between and I find that it's really hard to study for it because you need practice problems but you also need to understand the theory as well. So I felt pretty bad about it at first but little did I know that this would be the first of many failed exams that I would have. Up next is midterm two of physics for engineers two. In UBC terms, physics 158. Now, this course is infamous for being extremely freaking hard. And that really showed in midterm two when I got a very brutal 41%. So people who have been watching me for a while now will know that from the courses that I've taken that were about electromagnetism, I really suck at electromagnetism. Those titles weren't just for clickbait. Electromagnetism, in my opinion, is one of like the hardest concepts for me personally to, to visualize and understand because, well, the last time I checked, I couldn't really see electric field lines or magnetic field lines without some iron shillings in there. So yeah, it was, 
it was a pretty brutal exam, but surely I don't fail another electromagnetism exam ever again, right? And the last exam that I failed in my first year was midterm two of my intro to programming in C course. In UBC terms, that means APSI 160. And that came in at a very solid 46%. If I remember correctly for this midterm, I don't think there was a single question that I got full marks for. Yeah, it was just, I was just not having a good day that day. Pretty much for the coding questions, I could explain every single step that the code was supposed to do in English, but I just could not translate it into code. And that's literally all that I wrote for the program for grading. It was just comments in English about how every single step of that program should have run. And also I was just tweaking out on like the short coding answer questions and also the theory questions as well. I think I messed, I think I accidentally clicked submit when I didn't mean, mean to on one of them. It really was just a mix of me not being prepared enough for the exam, multiple smooth brain moments during the exam, and also a huge hatred of coding from my end. So my second year of electrical engineering, as we will see in a second, was fucked. In fact, I actually failed five exams in my second year. And as we will also see near the end of the video, there were a lot of exams that I actually almost failed as well. So second year was pretty cooked. So first up, how fittingly, was the first midterm of my second year which was midterm one of my circuit analysis class, which was ELEC 201. And that exam came in at a very, very strong 45%. This was the first exam that I took on web work. And if you don't know what web work is, it's basically a platform where you can, oh shit, what is there insects here? Basically web work is um, you can type in your answers and then you can check your answers as many times as you want within the allotted time period. And uh, basically there's no real part marks for showing your work or anything like that. You either get it or you get zero. And for most of the questions, I tended to lean towards zero. Yeah, that was, was a particularly rough one for me. Pretty much like KVL and KCL weren't working. I had like six equations, but like eight unknowns for a lot of the questions and a lot of the work that I had. And I was just not having a good time. So yeah, that was a pretty amazing start to my second year, I will say that. But as we will see in a second, it, it kind of got worse from there. Up next is, or was, the first final exam that I actually ever failed, which was my data structures and algorithms class with a solid 47% on my final exam. Basically in this exam, there were a bunch of like theory questions about coding and then also some coding questions as well. And for the coding questions, which were worth, first of all, which were worth like half of the exam, I got zero on both of them, which meant that like 30 to 40% of my final exam grade just poof, disappeared. And let's just say that the theory wasn't really that easy either for me, but didn't matter at all in the end because the prof ended up scaling the ever living shit out of that exam and also the course as well, because otherwise I have no idea how I would have ended up above the class average. Up next, starting off semester two of my second year with a strong start, we have my next field exam, which was midterm one of my circuit analysis two class coming in at around 40%. This was just another case of me doing like really bad while everyone else did really well. Also, I realized that I really should have studied Thevenin equivalents a lot better. But luckily that 40% exam grade in the end was kind of irrelevant because my final exam grade, which I did do better on, backwards replaced that midterm grade, uh, which I didn't do too well on. So 
it didn't matter all that much in the end. All right, so I forgot to film this section yesterday while I was out in the park. I don't know how I forgot to film it, but yeah, I don't fucking care anymore. We, we, we're, we're doing it anyways. We're doing it anyway. The next failed exam was probably the second worst exam that I've ever taken in my uni career so far. And that was midterm two of my electromagnetism plus vector calculus course coming in at an eye-watering 41%. This exam was fucked, really fucked. As I've mentioned before and in previous videos, I do not like electromagnetism, and combining vector calculus into it is a recipe for not having a good time. Surprisingly though, half of my marks on that midterm came from the one vector calculus question that I actually somehow got full marks on. But that was it. Every other question was either blank because, well, I didn't know how to do it, or just straight up wrong. But at least my 41% mark wasn't really too far from the class average, which was around 46%. Just showing how fucked that class was. And the last exam that I failed was actually one of the last exams that I took in my second year. I took a couple of easy-ish courses over the summer after second year, thinking that they would be pretty easy to get through. One of them was, but the other one was not. And that other course just happened to be my engineering economics class. With my final exam coming in at 48%. Just for some context, our final exam for that course was made online and also open book as well. And meaning that we could use Excel and any other course materials we had at our disposal. However, the exam compensated for that by being A, really freaking hard, and B, really freaking long. Like, it was so long to the point, like, I had to actively make a choice of, like, which questions that I would strategically do because I knew that there was not going to be enough time to write the exam. But the course ended up being scaled so much that I ended up above the class average somehow, even though my final exam grade was below the class average. I honestly don't know how this keeps happening to me. So third year was the year that I finally told myself at the beginning of the year that I was actually going to lock in for that year. How naive I was. Jokes aside, I actually only failed two exams that year, which was a record for me. However, one of those exams happened to be my worst exam ever, period. And we'll get into that in just a second. So failed exam number one of my third year was midterm number one of my electromechanical energy conversion and transmission course. If you're from UBC, ELEC 342. And that exam came in at a very respectable 40.5%. This midterm was particularly bad for me because, well, actually, I'll just let my past self explain it. Yeah, I still yeah. remember on the second <laughs> midterm, on the second midterm, I was banking on like a few questions being on, a few questions oh, from yeah. the web work being on the, on the midterms because apparently in this course, a lot of the, your homework questions on web work appear on the midterms, sometimes verbatim. Yeah. Sometimes verbatim. So people uh, like to prepare for that, right? I was preparing for a few questions, but there were two questions in our assi in one of our assignments that I was banking on not showing up because I was like, okay, these are way too hard, and I do not think he's gonna. He, there's no way in hell he's gonna put them on the exam. Exam opens at five forty. We open it up. We see it, and there's the two questions that I didn't study for. And last, and certainly least. We have my introduction to probability midterm exam and oh my goodness. Basically up until this point, all of my failed exams have been in the 40% range. None have been below 40%. But this exam was different. The mark I got for this midterm was an outstanding, drum roll please, 18.75%. Yes, 
seven and a half out of 40 marks. And mind you, this midterm was worth 40% of my overall grade. Honestly, I don't even know what to say about this midterm. It's just, yes, it was hard for everyone else judging by the 50% class average, but I clearly just didn't study enough. Also, it didn't help that probability just didn't click with me in general. But just like being rejected by your crush, this was excellent motivation for me for the final exam. And with my final grade, I ended up only being 1% below the class average, which I'm pretty proud about, not gonna lie. <laughs> Bonus round time. Just for shits and giggles, here are some honorable mentions for exams that I've almost failed. First, we have my Physics 170 midterm, which is basic mechanics one. Uh, we're coming in at 50%. Fun fact, this was the first exam that ever made me cry as an engineering student. And actually the only exam that's ever made me cry as an engineering student. Next up is Math 152 Midterm 2, which is linear algebra coming in also at 50%. Basically, there were way too many questions and not enough time to complete that exam. Also, there was a huge cheating scandal that went on, but that, that's a whole other video entirely. Next, we have ELEC 202 Midterm Number 1, which is also from my Circuit Analysis 1 class coming in at around 54%. And apparently, I really suck at op amps. Next up, we have ELEC 211 Midterm 1, which is my Electromagnetism plus Vector Calculus course with an exam around 52%, I believe. And as I mentioned before, I really hate electromagnetism, and I also hate vector calculus. Next up, we have ELEC 221, which is my Signals and Systems class coming in at around 54%. And that was after scaling. Before scaling, I technically failed. Next up, we have ELEC 342 Midterm 1, which is the electromechanical energy conversion blah 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 course that I talked about earlier, which is basically just motors and shit. And that exam was Midterm 1, and it came in at 50.7%. Magnetic circuits are painful. Second to last, we have my electromagnetic fields and waves midterm coming in at 52%. And again, I really hate electromagnetism. And lastly, we have my ELEC 341 midterm and my final exam, which is my control systems class. And both of those exams came in at 52% and 54% respectively. And well, all I gotta say is that we love MATLAB exams. And that's every exam that I've failed so far as an electrical engineering student. With all the jokes aside, if there's one thing to take away from this video, it's that it's not the end of the world if you fail an exam. As I've demonstrated multiple times in this video, failing an exam does not mean that you're destined to fail the course or do poorly in a subject. And if anything, it's actually been beneficial for me to get comfortable with failure as it's a pretty important skill to learn in engineering and also just for life as well. Anyways, that's been it for this video. I hope that for all you engineering students out there, you can see how much of a model student I am and also take some comfort in the fact that, well, an engineering student is probably doing a lot worse than you are based on this video. Anyways, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.